So just a quick update on the ChemiChemi -chemi study and actually the first results and uh, update on the Gutsy study. So uh, a really fast introduction. We, I'm pretty sure you've heard uh, for today that people living with HIV have still increased risks of non-AIDS comorbidities that are linked mostly to infection. And we know that uh, one of the sources of this infection is actually the gut because there's a leaky gut, you know, like part of microbes going into the blood and inducing inflammation. And so recently now there's quite a consensus that the gut microbiota, so the microbes that live in the gut, also participate in this link with inflammation in this risk of comorbidities. And it's um, now we know that it's independent of age, of sex, of sexual practice. We've heard that all of those things can uh, influence microbiota composition, but despite this, there's still a link between gut microbiota and the risk of non aids diseases and inflammation. So to try to uh, modify the gut microbi microbiota, we developed two approaches. The first one is a natural approach with a fruit called chemu chemu, and the second one is a more medical approach with uh, FMT. So let's just discuss uh, the chemu chemu. What is chemu chemu? It's actually a fruit. It's an Amazon Amazonian fruit. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it if you uh, attended those city meetings. So it's, uh, its consumption is used. It's authorized by Health Canada. It's actually rich in vitamin C and polyphenols. And uh, we, you can find it in health stores. You see Dr. Ruti here advertising Camu Camu in all the health stores you can find. And um, so we got really interested in Camu Camu because in mice, it's really good at reducing inflammation in the gut and uh, reducing leaky gut. And they've shown that it's also linked to a, a favor, a beneficial microbes or a better microbiota in the gut. And interestingly, uh, I think like more, than, more than 10 years ago now, in smokers, smokers who drink chemical -chemi juice have reduced marker of inflammation in the gut, also showing that chemical -chemi is an anti-inflammatory potential. And so more recently, uh, with uh, Dr. Bertrand Routier de Chim also, we have shown that, uh, well, they have shown and we collaborated with them, that chemical -chemi has a potential to modify the gut mi microbiota and increase the response to cancer immunotherapy. So the, uh, we published this paper in Cancer Discovery, cancer discovery this, this uh, year. So based on this, we uh, hypothesized that if uh, people living with HIV, if those under antiretroviral under therapy, um, take chemo chemo extract, we will favor, uh, they, it will favor a more beneficial microbiota and then decrease inflammation and leaky gut. So we developed the chemo chemo study. It's a pilot study. It's a really simple study, only one arm. And um, so we have six visits. So after screening, is this working? I know. Okay. So after screening, we ask participants to come to the clinic for two baseline visits. The goal is to assess the intra participants' viability between the two visits. Then we ask them to take chemical chemi extract in capsules uh, every day for three months, in addition to their treatment. And then they stop, and we ask them to come back eight weeks later, eight weeks later to assess there's a carryover effect. At each visit, visit, we collect blood to assess inflammation and leaky gut markers. We will collect stools to uh, assess the, to, quanti to uh, characterize the gut microbiota. And in an optional step study, we ask participants to, do, to have colon biopsies taken before and after treatment uh, at baseline to an end of treatment. So we started the recruitment in November, 2020. And despite COVID, we were able to actually um, recruit 22 participants. Um, one of these participants had, had to be uh, stopped the, the, the study early because of, of an ASAE, I, I just could be later. So just a quick overview, we recruited 22 participants, 21 male and only one female. They were all living with HIV, all on uh, ART for at least three years. And they have a CD4 to CD8 ratio below one because those are the one with higher risk of inflammation and uh, the higher degree of dysbiosis. And interestingly, 13 of the 22 participants agreed to um, participate in the sub-study with colon biopsies taken before and after. So the primary objective of the study was to assess the leaky gut uh, markers. So I just, leaky gut and inflammation markers. So I'm just actually presenting the first results because we, uh, we are starting, we are ongoing, um, we are uh, analyzing those markers. So two markers of the gut uh, microbes, so IFAB and LPS, and you see that basically that doesn't look like there's a, a clear variation in those levels. Maybe um, a slight decrease in LPS in some participants after one month of chemicamy, but nothing really uh, stringent here. And uh, just one inflammation marker, IP10, doesn't look like it's very um, 
changing over time. Plus, it is really the first analysis, the crude analysis that uh, we will do more multivariable analysis afterwards. I'm talking about safety, so safety reliability. So we are also ongoingly analyzing this. We had one ACE that was a CV aortic stenosis that was actually not deemed relevant to CC used, but actually worsening of a condition that was uh, present before. And um, we are also looking at all the serum chemistry, all the, all the plasma viral loads, to, to see if this really, uh, to confirm the uh, tolerability of this thing. The gut microbiota composition studying is ongoing. We will look at HIV reservoir. We will also compare the viability to other markers. In an exploratory object, uh, objective, we looked at reg free alpha, another marker of the gut, uh, the leaky gut that we, we actually described in the lab. And then there's really no uh, differences between uh, before and after in all participants. And we are also looking at the uh, precious gut biopsy that we have. So this was okay for the, the simple approach with the fruit extract. And now discussing the fecal microbiota transplantation, which is the GUTSI study. So a uh, fecal microbiota transplantation is a process by which we uh, actually transfer the microbiota from a healthy donor to a recipient. It's authorized in Health Canada for the treatment of um, clostridium difficile, um, recurrent clostridium difficile infections. And uh, there are several ways to do it in transmitting crab, describing uh, literature by colon, done by colonoscopy, by a nasopharyngeal tubes, or by capsules. And capsules are like, actually easier. And we were really interested in this study because it's, there's a pilot study performed in Spain that shows that IFAB, one of the marks of the leaky gut I described earlier, is decreased in those who receive low dose FMT uh, after four and eight weeks. Um, yeah, four and eight weeks. So if you modify the gut microbiota with capsules containing a low dose of a, uh, micro, of a beneficial microbiota, you can reduce marker of the leaky gut. So, the, let's, uh, so we built this uh, gutsy study by, um, and our hypothesis is if we give a beneficial microbiota, so healthy donor microbiota to a person living with HIV under treatment, we should favor um, beneficial microbes, so beneficial microbiota, reduce inflammation, reduce leaky gut. So we collaborate with Dr. Michael Silverman in Ontario, who's actually specialized in uh, preparation of those capsules. Here you see them in blue. Um, and we will give a, really a higher dose of um, a higher number of capsules, so four times more than what has been described in the um, Spain, Spanish study. And so uh, collaborating with Dr. Ruti's son, Dr. Dr. Bertrand Ruti at the CRSHUM, they have a similar study in cancer patients, so uh, people with uh, patients with melanoma or lung cancer. And they have shown that if they give 30 to 40 capsules only one single time without any pretreatment, they have a really good engraftment, so uh, a strong modification of the gut microbiota. And they have done that in, uh, I think, for now 22 patients, if I'm following correctly, and that no, uh, no ACE in the study going really well. So based on this, we actually modified, I won't go into detail, but we changed a little bit the design of our study to uh, a randomized study, a placebo controlled, 20 participants, 20 art treated participants, once again with a ratio CD4 to one below one to select those with higher risk of inflammation and dysbiosis. So in the treated arm, we will ask participants to continue their AOT for the full duration of the study. And um, so the first baseline, and as this, before the second baseline, they will take a bowel cleanse, you know, the preparation you do before colonoscopy to actually make room for the new microbiota. Then we will give them 30 to 40 capsules containing a stool product from selected donors. Those donors are selected because they are known to uh, decrease symptoms due to IBD, so they should protect the gut. And 20, uh, 22 days later, so three weeks later, and have a run of FMT, and we will follow uh, those participants for three months. In the uh, placebo arms, the same process, bowel cleans, and then uh, placebo capsules cont containing uh, cellulose, which is a, um, an inert, inactive uh, compound. So compare, if you heard me presenting before, we simplified the study by removing the anti antibiotic treatment, which apparently is not necessary to um, favor the engraftment of the microbiota if we use large dose. So the objective are pretty similar to the chemi, -chemi studies, so looking at uh, gut markers, uh, gut and markers and inflammation, looking at also a safety and durability, of course, and we will look at the gut microbiota composition, the changes in HIV reservoirs in blood and in the gut biopsies. 
So we are uh, in the process of finalizing the uh, the protocol, the IB and the ICF. I see Judy looking at me really there. And we have we have to finish it. <laughs> and so then I can actually submit the protocol hopefully this week. And uh, the informed database conception is in preparation with Julia. And so we hope to recruit really uh, early 2023. And so if you're interested in uh, the concept of uh, fecal microbiota transplantation, we actually published this review uh, a year ago now, discussing the relevance of using this technique and comparing what, is, what should be used in HIV to what is used in GVHT. And with this, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Oti's team, uh, all, our, uh, all our team, thank you, Carolina is doing a, a great job, all our collaborators who are actually working in the lab right now. The ICTN team, Judy, Dana, Joanne, and Julia, thank you so much, and thank you all of you for your attention.